Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Sam Kwok, one of the Kwok Brothers Real Estate Investor, and we have a special guest here, Jamil from Kegley. And he, honestly, this is our first interaction, face-to-face uh, -face meeting. I was introduced by, by I believe, your assistant, right, Jamil? Yeah, Carly reached out to you. Yeah, yeah. Carly reached out to me and uh, read some of uh, um, Jamil's um, background story as well as some uh, achievement. I'm like, oh, yeah, we should get this guy on the podcast. So, uh, so go ahead, Jamil. Welcome to the show, and tell exactly what you do. I, I know you're in real estate investing, just like we are. But uh, go and sh share what you do, what, what your accomplishment was. How did you get in real estate investing in the first place? Awesome. So I'm Jamil Damji. I am the president, co-founder of Kegley. We're a volume wholesale operation for um, your viewers who don't know what wholesaling is. Um, that's where we look for distressed properties that we can buy at a, a, you know, at a, at a really great price. And then we turn around and sell our position in the contract on that deal for a fee. So um, we do anywhere between, you know, 65 to 85 transactions on a month to month basis. We're in nine markets in the United States. Um, really expanding rapidly. I've got a great, uh, amazing team of around 46 people now uh, and growing every day. Um, uh, how did I get into real estate? Well, on accident, honestly, in 2003, uh, I, was, uh, I, I was actually an owner of a media company where we made websites um, back in the day when people didn't even know what websites were. And um, we, uh, I, my, my business partner was having a conversation with his father and uh, they were describing a, a situation they were having where they were, they were looking for a specific type of building lot and they couldn't find it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm relegated to just living off of $600 websites at the time. So my eyes didn't understand what, um, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars they were talking about. But I overheard them talking about making $160,000 in profit on a deal. And so, you know, long story short, I, I found out the criteria of what his father was looking for. And the next day when I was walking my dog, um, I called a for rent by owner and, uh, and, and came to find out that this was the exact type of property that uh, my, uh, my friend's father was looking for. Yeah. In my conversation with my friend, I found out they would pay 400 grand for these houses and this lady would sell for 350. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I called a real estate attorney to ask him what I could do. And that attorney yeah. introduced me to the magic of contracts and assignments and, and nominees. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, I had $50,000 minus legal costs in my, in my pocket and sure. I was off to the races. So it was by accident, but serendipity in my opinion. Yeah. So what, when was this? Uh, approximately what, how many years ago? 2003. So we're oh, in wow. okay. almost 2020. So 17 yeah. years. You, you almost made it sound like it was recently. So yeah, no, <laughs> yeah no, I just I'm, wanted to I'm find grandpa. out. I'm, I'm grandpa wholesaler. Yeah, no, seriously. So you were you were wholesaling before this whole wholesale craze got into into place. Yeah. I think this the whole idea of wholesaling you know, obviously got really popular in the last geez, like seven years, right? Yep, six seven years. And what why do you think that is? Um, how did how did this concept of wholesaling, where uh, from my own understanding, uh, back in the day uh, when you were getting started, <laughs> um, people were buying obviously property in bulk, you know, 10, 15 properties and uh, the investor couldn't fix and flip all of them in time. So obviously people, the investor will sell three or four of them away at a higher margin uh, and collect profit that way. How did that, how did it go from that to becoming almost like an oper full blown operation now? How, what, what do you think made the difference? I think what you described, the scenario you described sums it up perfectly. So you were talking yeah. about high net worth, high, you know, wealthy people who right. understood contracts, who understood, you know, the capacity to make money from just signing your name and understanding right. value and that where that knowledge was locked in that group of people, those wealthy people, yeah. they weren't sharing that information. And um, what ended up happening is the internet uh, essentially allowed people to, to learn. And mm. because you, we have so many people out there that have this burning desire to be entrepreneurs that, that are looking for a way to get their foot up or their leg up in the business without having any money, and wholesaling is a, is a magnet to that because right. you essentially can do deals with nothing. And I had nothing at that time. I was broke. And for a guy like me, from a background like I had, to, to come in and be able to make 50 grand from making a couple of phone calls and just understanding a concept, yeah. that's life changing, right? And right. so I think what's happened is access to information has, yeah. has the, we just, we've taken it from a select few of wealthy people and disseminated it to the world.
Yeah, that almost sounds like it, it, it was a perfect timing for the industry because obviously social media came about 2008. I mean, that's when it really took off. Um, no one really knew about Facebook till about 2006, right? 2007. Yep. And, um, I think this almost came in a perfect timing because the market crash happened in 2008 and then obviously Facebook and everything else was riding that wave uh, post 2008. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, you're making a lot of money, which I, I, I do believe, and you make it sound super duper easy. easy. What, what was that uphill climb like? Uh, Cause everyone has that, right? It's, it's, yeah. I think it's unfair to say, Oh, next day, you know, I went to a boot camp, and in a matter of minutes, I got, I got a hundred thousand dollar check. I, obviously there's, exceptions but what what was your uphill battle like your, your journey in that in that challenge and growing so you know the the funny thing about my 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 journey in this is that it's never been difficult for me to actually do deals mm. what's been difficult for me has been um i i mean i lost money i lost my ass in the first crash right so yeah. uh i went from you know we had made millions of dollars my sister and i were doing condo conversions we we elevated from wholesale into development and lost our butts, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that climb has been just the, the peaks and the valleys. Um, I, I was equipped with some understanding of how to do the deals back then, the first go around, but I wasn't mentally, spiritually, emotionally mature enough to understand how to handle the money. Mm -hmm. And so I made a lot of mistakes. I bought a lot of unnecessary things. I um, I had my lifestyle choices were, weren't in congruence with what they needed to be. And so for me to have lost all that money, rightly so I was a mess. Right. Yeah. And, um, so it's navigating yourself. It's having, for me, the, the journey has been a, a one of self discovery. Um, I feel that I, 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 I kind of have a grasp on what it means to, to make money. Uh, I've had to figure out how to, uh, fix my, myself so that I can keep it. Right. And, um, and that's been my, that's been my, my biggest struggle. I think mm -hmm. your listeners that are there sitting in, you know, the rooms right now with nothing in their pockets that are, you know, maybe looking for a nugget of information or, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, something to kind of jar them out. Truthfully, guys, um, having a big process going and going and investing in a, you know, a course or this or that might not be your right step for right out the gate. The first thing that you need to do is change your mind and then take one step. One little baby step leads to a second baby step. And that, in my opinion, is how you climb the mountain. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So with, with that being said, I know a lot of people uh, believe, hey, having a lot of money is going to change my life. Honestly, that's what I thought too, right? I, I grew up from an immigrant family. Uh, I grew up where I didn't speak English. I had, English is my second language. And I thought, hey, making money is going to improve my life. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment that I, I hit six figures in my business, I'm like, nothing's changed. I'm, like, I'm not any happier. Uh, and I think that's the biggest fallacy that people make is, you know, money makes, makes people happier. Well, not really. Um, so I, I think I know, I know where you're coming from, where uh, making money really hasn't made you happy itself, but it was, what, what do I, what's the follow through, right? What do I do with right. that money and the success? I, I think that's what really helped me sort of um, get out of that zone. Like where, when you get money, I, I felt like, oh, I can spend money on getting a new car or a new house. None of those have helped me, you know, fill that hole, that fulfillment that, that I needed. So I think you hit it right on the money uh, as far as where is your motive, right? So, so for you, Jamil, what, what is the next mo motive for you right now? I mean, you've been in this for 17 years. Clearly, you're not in it for the money anymore. Money just comes. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what has been your next mission and um, sort of a higher meaning or higher purpose for you? I love that you asked that because it's a question yeah. I haven't been asked. Um, and um, oddly enough, I'm embarking on that journey uh, beginning today. So oh, wow. um, a good friend of mine, uh, his name is Pace Morby. Um, wow. him, him and I and uh, are going to be on Steve Trang's Real Estate Disruptors podcast okay. today. Um, and we're going to announce uh, a, you know, a special thing that we're doing. And um, mm -hmm. since this is going to probably air after, I'll, I'll, I'll tell your viewers uh, – but essentially, we're going to go on a tour of um, the United States where we're going to show up at your local RIA. And we're going to talk about how we have been able to explode our business by being collaborative, mm -hmm. by working together with my competition without looking at them and looking at their plate and wondering, you know, why are they yeah. getting that and why don't I have this? And instead of being upset and salty at the success of my brothers and my, and my competitors, um, I truly changed my heart and my friends changed his heart and we've exploded our business and found ways to 
make money with each other without mm -hmm. taking from each other and add to each other's lives and businesses without getting yeah. jealous. And I think a lot of states have communities that are broken. Mm -hmm. And because we're just so stuck in survival, we're all so stuck in it's not enough, it's gonna end, um, the market's gonna crash, this will only last so, so long. Yeah, yeah. Those are such fear-driven thoughts, right? Um, they're, they, they come from a spirit of fear. And I think that because of that, we have communities that are enveloped in the spirit of fear. And what I would love to do and my higher purpose for the next foreseeable future is to try to just eliminate that black cloud and yeah, yeah. how, you know, just by holding hands and being, you know, it's not about being corny and like singing Kumbaya, <laughs> but it's about like sure. legitimately like caring that somebody does well and not just smiling at them and saying, Hey, I'm happy you're, you're doing good, but like really caring, like really, really mm -hmm. being happy about it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, that that's going to evolve the space into something that's beautiful. I at least hope yeah. that this is a grand vision and you know, him and I may be unsuccessful and we might not make an impact. I don't sure. think that's possible. I think that if we can show one person how it's awesome to be mm -hmm. better to have, have a better outlook, um, a clearer mindset, and be collaborative with the people in your community. If one city or one group or one you know, small section of folks adopts that mentality, then every city we'll go to will be awesome. Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, you mentioned something, and I'll get to that in just a second. I'll, I'll switch gears in, in, in a minute. Um, you, you mentioned uh, about being altruistic, but I think, I think uh, I think you were that way from the get-go, and, and here's why I believe that. Um, I think you got to one to a point in business where you're doing good, you're, you know, you're you're being very successful. But I think ultimately adapting that mindset probably got you into the other notch, right? And I, I see this a lot, time and time again. People would tell me, Sam, I'll be generous when I'm rich, right? I'll be generous when I'm, you know, making X amount of dollars, and I tell them you won't. Um, and, and I think you have to have that first before the money comes in. It, it, yeah. Money just amplifies what you already have. Absolutely. So I think, I think for you, I think you already had that higher calling, the purpose in the back of your mind, and that, what, that's what really drove you uh, past your past barrier that you had. Uh, so that, that's, that's awesome for, for you to say that because obviously that's something that I preach a lot here. And uh, for those that are listening, uh, if you haven't figured that out by yet, you first have to be until you have that until, you know, before you get. Right. You have to be generous before you get to the things that you want to get to. So switching gears a little bit, um, you mentioned about recession. And I asked this, I asked this to all of our guest speakers or guest uh, interviewees. Uh, do you think it's going to happen? Yes or no? Uh, as far as recession in the next very short term, one or two years? Uh, I think that uh, in the next, you know, I'd say three, maybe four years, okay. we'll see some form of, a, of an economic dip. Um, my honest opinion is that we're in for a manufacturing recession, not a housing one. If you look at the last five recessions, only two of them negatively impacted housing. Mm -hmm. um, three of them positively did. And so um, because of that, I think that we don't really, uh, we shouldn't have a lot of fear. And if you're, if you're waiting for the crash to get into this, you're crazy. Um, <laughs> you, you know, like that's, that I think that you're just wasting you're wasting precious moments of learning sure. and understanding um, because you're you're happier on the sideline, right? Sure. That use and so um, I don't think that a recession is going to negatively affect us in real estate. Mm -hmm. In all honesty, um, at the same time, I have a massive cash cash position in my life, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so maybe uh, there's an there's an inkling of of some. Uh, you know, intuition there that's keeping me in a, in a liquid state. But, um, but I'm, I, I, I don't, I don't see us getting into the same situation we were sure. in in 2010. So, so what you mentioned, I think is, is a, is a one school thought. Uh, I think there's a good, good amount of people who think this way, Hey, you know, in any market in a smart, educated investor should be able to make money in any, any type of market, right. To be versatile right. and, and flexible. Uh, but what, what do you say about the people that may say, well, a good investor also knows how to stay disciplined and knows how to restraint when restraint is required. And so just a little, you know, poking at you out here and, and throwing a little challenge. What, what would you, what would you say the contrary? Like, what if you're wrong, right? Uh, what, what do you say to those individuals or investors that, that say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm practicing restraint right now 
because that's that's what I believe to be a smart move. So, I mean, if I'm wrong and somebody's taken my advice and 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 like lost their ass, I'd say I'm sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> first and foremost, but yeah. second, I mean, don't listen to me, man. <laughs> right? I don't have a, I don't got a crystal ball. Um, right. All I can tell you is that I uh, I I I don't believe that we have an administration right now that's going to allow an economic situation right. to happen before the next election. And then I also believe that we have an administration that's going to be highly motivated to protect their legacy. Mm -hmm. And so um, take what, take from that what you want. Yeah. Yeah. And not, not, not to get political, but I think you're, you're right. Uh, there, there's a vested interest for obviously president Trump to not I no have problem with it. I mean, I'm, I, right. I'm not giving an opinion positive <laughs> or negative. I'm just saying this, right, is what, right. you know, no, but, but let's state the facts, right? I mean, the, the sitting president, President Trump, has a vested interest of yep. not having a recession during his his, his term, right? Obviously, and he's, the, and he's one of the presidents that's been <laughs> able to like actually make things like that not happen. Right. Right? Oh, absolutely. Um, sure. I mean, hey, man, you let, you, he's got some kind of wizardry going on over there. Keep doing it, brother. <laughs> right. No, and and it's it, ultimately it's about his brand too. I think that's that he's one of the presidents that care about his brand because that he built hotels, he built. <laughs> steak products with his name, university you know, of education, right? So I think my, he cares about his name. I know? have a friend, Steve Trang, who's, who's along the lines. Right now he's working on a, on a brand of steaks. Um, just oh, really? Yeah, no, he's just, uh, I'm just playing. I'm, he's, I'm staying at him right now. So, oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> That's funny. So with, with that being said, uh, you're in wholesaling world. Are you also uh, doing buy and holds or any, any other forms of real estate investing or is wholesaling ma mainly your thing? I was uh, in vacation rentals for quite a while. Oh, okay. Uh, my family and I owned a, a portfolio of them, and we just exited to a hedge fund about six months ago. Nice. Um, and uh, holding that cash too. Right on. Awesome. <laughs> that, no, that's awesome because I, I think at the, at the end of the day, uh, this is something I tell to wholesalers all the time is uh, keep on doing what you're doing, but invest 20% of that into something long term. Absolutely. You're, you're Absolutely. not going to – you're you're only profitable as your, your last – wholesale deal or contract assignment. So keep something, you know, some loose change as far as uh, investing into a rental property. So with, with that being said, um, you know, I, I got to know a lot about you, uh, Jamil, just throughout the last couple of minutes here. Uh, what would you say um, outside of real estate investing, what is your biggest passion in life? And I'm going to go a little bit personal here. So what would you say is your biggest passion in life? Meditation and my dogs. <laughs> okay. How many dogs do you have? Three dogs. I got a okay. French bulldog. I got a Pomeranian and a Boston Terrier. Oh, I, I forgot my kids. <laughs> I, I don't know how that came. Before. I don't know how that came. Uh, so the dogs came before the, the kids. Follow that out. Or, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep this a secret between you and me and the yeah. YouTube world. Yeah. My family and uh, um, yeah, man, like meditation and my family. Yeah. I'm, I'm, those are the things that bring tears to my eyes. I love, you know, just uh, mm -hmm being in stillness and I love being around the people I love. Yeah. My friends, my family, they're everything to me. Right. Yeah. It, it's so crazy, man. I mean, you look at some of the most successful people, they're nothing about money. They're not, you, you look at, you look at them and they, they look very unassuming. And I look at people who are, who are rather all about the money. I mean, this is, there's exceptions, right. But you know, people who like to, uh, you know, after you puff, right. Mm -hmm. uh, then I find them not to have much money uh, at the end of the day, you know, when the, when the tide sh uh, goes out the shore. So, um, so I want to wrap this up with you, uh, Jamil. We like to keep this 20 to 30 minutes long. Sure. Uh, for those real estate investors or uh, real estate investors to be, uh, they're coming up, they're, they're getting into the industry, they're just finding about this amazing uh, concept of you know, buy and hold or wholesaling. What would you say to these uh, individuals as far as getting started? What are some of the words that you would encourage them with uh, for the beginners? Um, how? <laughs> I apologize for the swear, but no, we'll, we'll, we'll bleep it out. Uh, we're, yeah. we're a very PG uh, channel yeah. here, but yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. F how, right. It's, right. <laughs> it's, it's really not, it's not difficult. There's guys mm -hmm. out there, you know, watch, watch the podcasts and watch the influencers of the space. Right. Um, uh, follow me on Instagram, follow Max Maxwell, follow <laughs> Steve Trang, follow Pace Morby, Brent Daniels. These guys are putting out content daily um, that is highly, 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 uh, informational on, on how to get started and, and the ways to like get your first deal under your belt. I right. think you don't need to get super crazy and, and um, you know, go invest $80,000 in mentoring. Um, what you should do is do a couple of deals, um, get an understanding of how to do this, 
and then go find a coaching program that uh, will help show you how to scale. We offer right. one, but I'm not here to pitch. I'm just sure. here to give like general information. You know, I think mm-hmm. that there's a lot of guys out there that fall into the trap. Um, yeah. They think there's going to be a savior out there. There's not. You're the savior. That's it. Cool. Hey, hey, yeah, I appreciate your opinion and, and obviously uh, your word of advice for people who are getting started. I mean, 17 years in the making, probably more. Uh, you probably had other skill set or traits that you picked up on uh, prior to getting started in real estate investing. I think that's a lot of things that people don't, don't account for is all the success that you see in someone, there's a long history of you know, mistakes and failing forward and uh, learning. So I uh, appreciate you sharing 17 years of knowledge within 20 years. Uh, I think you did a great job. Uh, and I, of course, we'll, we'll definitely bring you back on another episode as a follow-up uh, to see how you're doing. But hey, Jamil, it's been a pleasure. I uh, appreciate you. you being on board. And I know you spilled your soul and, and your heart out. I uh, appreciate you doing that. And for our listeners, of course, you guys can go check out Jamil's uh, YouTube page as well as podcast. We're going to leave that down below in the description, uh, video description section as well. Uh, if you like the podcast, go ahead and click like on this video. It does help, uh, help us a lot in terms of our YouTube algorithm. Uh, the more blue likes we have, the more people can see this video. And if you care about other people seeing this, chances are you should. And uh, as always, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified for future videos. Uh, Again, Jamil, appreciate you being on board and we'll definitely have you back for another episode. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Take care.